Last night I dreamt that my uncle hung himself in the attic, that we were too late. The house looked different, but it was still called Dorsetto. Definitely a weird place. Feels like I've been here before, I just can't think why. Let's not waste any time, Detective. Yeah, you're right. Let's go get your uncle, Miss Hartwood. It transports you into the dark alleyways and into the night. I mean, it's always trying to create a mystery, right? It's something that's more than just jump scares. A bit of fighting, demanding puzzles, and a lot of atmosphere. It maintained some of that weirdness of the old games, but it had like an updated slickness to it that I liked as well. You haven't seen a little girl by any chance, have you? I don't think so. Uh, you would have known if you did. We start our story much like the original. Jeremy Hartwood is haunted by the dark man, and he goes to a countryside hospital called Dressetto in hope to find some help. I need to get this letter to my niece. She would understand. Jeremy sends a disturbing letter to Emily Hartwood, his niece, and it spooks her enough that she hires Detective Edward Carnby to find out what's going on. Who are you? Whoa, pardon me, excuse me. My name is Edward Carnby, private investigator. I hope you don't mind we let ourselves inside. I do mind. We knew early on that we had a character-driven story, so we needed to find some really good actors to uh, make those characters come to life. I knew of past iterations of the game. I mean, the video game world is something that I'm very interested in in general, the horror game genre specifically. David has a really strong presence as an actor, and he's able to make the funny moments really funny, but also the dramatic parts really intense. Why the hell do I wake up hearing that damn voice? I know what it sounds like, but it's not what you think. He's kind of a gruff detective, and he's like searching for something, and you know, he's uh, he's hard boiled, but he's got some humor to him and stuff like that. He's a bit of a um, trope or a type, and I like that, and I like the world and sort of where, how he's exploring this insanity um, amidst all this horror and stuff. I liked all those aspects. Uh, let me know if you find her. I'll be around. Emily Hartwood has a closer connection to the plot as she's Jeremy's niece. And therefore also suffers this strange affliction known as the Hartwood curse. I love the mystery of the game. Um, I love the picture of her. Like there was so much about it that I was curious of. There's a lot of fear within her and a lot of speculation and curiosity and um, I guess dread, intrigue, like there's a, there's a lot about her that is um, kind of on edge. Ten years now, more even since he died. He died a hero. Jodie's a fantastic actress and she brings a lot of nuance to Emily as a character and it really makes us sympathize with her. Who's in here? Show yourself. Yes, there is the, the kind of scary element, but then she still has to go on a journey and discover different things, and there should still be room to breathe and have a funny moment or a sarcastic moment or a moment of discovery. Um, so it's just trying to really kind of keep all those other beats alive amongst the, um, the kind of darkness of it all, I guess, is how I felt anyway. So we're bringing back both Emily and Edward as the playable characters. And the, depending on who you play, you will get a different take on the same story. 
The people at Dresetta will react differently to you depending on who you play. Even the story will be slightly different. What are you doing sneaking around? So you should definitely make sure to play the game twice. What are you doing in my kitchen? Get out! The way that we reimagined the game was basically looking at the original. And it feels like we've been cultivating a seed that was planted 30 years ago, and it has now grown into something even more dark, even more sinister. I remember that with the first Alone in the Dark I made in 1992, we were basically doing something that nobody had done before. It was the first time that we could explore a big mansion, fight monsters, and solve difficult puzzles all in real time 3D. At the core is a haunted mansion. That's the most important part. It's Dorsetto, I would say. Feeling that you're trapped inside. A uh, kind of small space. Yeah. I used to say back in the old days that it was another character. Yeah, for sure. With all the remakes going on today, you are never sure what you get at the end. I think that uh, Michael and the team at Pieces did a great job preserving the core feeling of the game. They even went further than everything I could expect 30 years ago. It's really an honor to sort of be a part of, of the franchise in that sense, because it is such a... Again, I, it can't be overstated. It's so special. It was such a new experience. As a fan of the original, I wanted to bring as much as I could into our version. And uh, they might have a slightly different meaning and different uh, reasons to be there, but if you know the old games, you will find a ton of references. Do I know you from somewhere? I remember you, Mr. Conby. I feel the franchise is in good hands now, and I can't wait to play the full game. To give you a taste of what the full game will be, we also created a prologue, and it features a character from the game called Grace Saunders, who is a little girl, and you play as her walking around your setto and trying to post a letter. The prologue is the first glimpse into the atmosphere and the mood, and of course the story of the full game. So uh, if you want to have a look, go and download it right now. They're so creepy. Our combat is intense and tough, and you will need to use every bullet you can find. And if you run out of bullets, I'm out of bullets. You might need to get in close and hit them with a melee weapon. Or if you're lucky, you can find something to throw. As mentioned before, your job is to find out what happened to Jeremy Hartwood. And to do that, you will need to visit some unexpected places. And to get to those places, you will need to find clues and solve some interesting puzzles. Depending how much you feel like a detective yourself, you can choose how much you want the game to help you find clues and where to go next. So the biggest um, creative focus for me has uh, for a long time been to reach something beyond the mundane, something spiritual. Mike, the director, and I, we spent a lot of time trying to figure out what direction, musical direction, we wanted to take with this project. And when we finally decided to go for this kind of dark or doom jazz direction. Our minds uh, went directly to Jason, who is uh, a master in this uh, genre. It's a very visual uh, genre of music. The fact that it's inspired from noir films or noir detectives is already a good explanation of why this music fits very well for um, Alone in the Dark. There's a huge mountain and, and volcano of, of reverb with drums and screaming saxophone.
to this explosion of, of yeah. hair rising uh, horror and, and uh, big chaos. As the players drawn deeper into the game world, they will face off with the sinister presence known as the Dark Man. The Dark Man isn't real, Jeremy. There's nothing he can do to hurt you. How do you think any of this is happening? How do you still not trust my words? Fine. Then let me help. Don't be foolish. He will bury you next to me in his sunken temple for an eternity. Real or not, something is definitely corrupting the mind of Jeremy Hartley. Something very, very dangerous.